Hello and welcome to another booktube video from me Lauren from Lauren and the Books and today I've got the second book haul of September. Naughty me! Naughty naughty but I've just been sent some amazing stuff and I've bought some amazing stuff and I don't regret any of it. I don't regret it. Um, but before we get into the book haul let me just let you know I've made one of those Google survey things um, that I've linked down below. It's all about this channel, how you feel about non-bookish content, how you feel about bookish content. If you've got any videos you'd like me to make or anything, I'd really appreciate it forever and always um, if you were to fill it on. I also shared it on um, <coughs> Twitter, so you may well have seen it there. You don't have to do it twice. Um, but if you do have a spare, I'd say three minutes and 22 seconds, um, that's probably all it will take you. So I'd really appreciate it if you wouldn't mind filling that in. But apart from that, let's get on with these bloody old books. But let me have a drink first because <coughs> I've got this stupid tickle. That's um, Bluebird's lemonade tea, cold brewed, delicious. Right, let's get started with, at the beginning of the month, I went to um, Jen Campbell's uh, book launch for Franklin's Flying Bookshop. There he is, over there. Um, while I was there, it was in, at Book and Kitchen, which is in Notting Hill, which is sadly um, closing uh, moving location, closing down. And she was getting rid of a lot of her stock. It was all 40% off. Now, I read... Um, Tip in the Velvet earlier this month and adored it, want to read more Sarah Waters. So how could I possibly turn down two Sarah Waters at 40% off? First of all, The Little Stranger um, and also The Night Watch. Now, I can't remember which one, but one of these, <laughs> I think it might be The Night Watch, might be The Little Stranger. I can't remember. One of these is being read um, on Jenny King's um, gothic read-along. Um, so I'm going to be reading one of these. I'll have to have a look. God, you would have thought, I'll insert it here, which one it is. Um, but yeah, so I'm excited about these. They're both... Um, Sells women-led books, which I always love. So it says here, let me do that, because that's going to confuse you. If I'm reading from The Night Watch and showing you The Little Stranger, no one's going to know what's going on. The Night Watch is the extraordinary story of four Londoners, Kay, who wanders the streets in mannish clothes, restless and searching, Helen, who harbours a troubling secret, Viv, glamour girl, recklessly loyal to her soldier lover, and Duncan, an apparent innocent, struggling with demons of his own. So this is set in the 1940s. Bloody sounds amazing. Loved it so, loved her stuff so far. And this is set in duty post-war summer in... Rural Warwickshire, a doctor is called to a patient at Lonely Hundreds Hall, home to the heirs family for over two centuries. The Georgian house, once grand and handsome, is now in decline. Its masonry crumbling, its gardens choked with weeds. I just love this shit. Its owners, mother, son and daughter are struggling to keep pace with a change in society. But are the heiresses, eh, heiresses? Heirs is, um, haunted by something more sinister than a dying way of life. Hmm. Oh, and they gave me a little bookmark as well. So those are the two books I got in uh, books and kit, book and kitchen. However, I work at a hospital and they've got a um, they've got like a volunteers desk where they sell um, books for fifty p each. When I was walking past there, what did they have? But the Paying Guest by Sarah Waters. So I've got three Sarah Waters books, accumulated those in the space of about 12 hours. Um, this one, the um, women's, oh no, it was, sorry, it was shortlisted for the, I think it won. I feel like this won the women's shortlisted, uh, the Women's Bailey's Prize for Fiction in 2015. Am I right? Um, this is set in 1922 and it's about a, a woman who owns um, a place and she takes in lodgers um, who are a modern couple. Yeah, I feel, I'm so excited by all the bloody Sarah Waters in the world. I also got from that very stand, The Distant Hours by Kate Morton. So I read The House at Riverton earlier this year, really loved it. Um, these sort of, Kate Morton follows the same sort of like, thread throughout her stories where something happened in the past and either someone who was included in that um, is revisited as an older person now or a member of their family is revisiting it. I love her books and although they're bloody massive, I always find them such a jaunt. This one's set in Kent, which is where I live, so that's exciting. Um, this is about Edie Birchill and her mother have never been close, but when a long lost letter arrives one Sunday afternoon with the return address of Milda Hurst Castle, Kent, haven't heard of it, printed on its envelope, Edie begins to suspect that her mother's emotional distance marks an old secret. Evacuated from London as a 13-year-old girl, Edie's mother was chosen by the mysterious Juniper Blythe and taken to live at Mildlehurst Castle with the Blythe family. Hmm, exciting. So that's very good. And also from that store, I forgot about these guys. You may... Excuse me. Excuse me over there. You may have seen on my Instagram, I picked up these four Daphne du Maurier's, um, which were... I thought they were going to be a pound each because hardback books are a pound. They gave them to me for 50p each. And I've never heard of any of them. Flight of the Falcon. I can't read anything. Mary Ann, now that's a lie, I think I have heard of Mary Ann because I believe this wasn't finished by Daphne du Maurier, I believe somebody else finished it on her behalf, um, not after midnight, not heard of, and Hungry Hill, not heard of, they all to me look like novels, none of them look like short stories, um, this one's got bloody pictures in it, and weird pictures at that, uh oh, man laying on the bed with ominous 
ominous figure in the background. Um, so yeah, looking forward to getting round to those at some point. So let's carry on with books that... <clears throat> I'll do the last of the books that I've bought and then we'll look at the books that I've been sent. So the last book I bought was Elmet by Fiona Mosley. Now I have watched Mercedes review this recently. I've watched Vanessa from Chbosky review this recently. And to be honest, I couldn't resist that autumnal cover and also it sounds like it's gonna be amazing it's about a, a bloke a bloke a bloke called daniel who um whose children he um he takes out of school and decides to educate them himself i think it's it's very it, it's, it sounds like it's going to be very sort of what is the word i'm looking for it sounds as though it's because david's listening to his podcast in the background and i can hear it oh sorry no it's okay i still love you is it better yeah, I'm really going to enjoy this. I'm looking forward to it. And yeah, it sounds like it's beautifully written. It sounds like it's got all the things. I mean, it really reminded me when people were talking about it of um, Our Endless Number Days. So I wonder if it's going to be a little like that. So yeah, very exciting, Elmer. So the rest of the books are books that I've been sent um, by publishers or I've got a couple from bookish subscription boxes, which I will link that down below. So the first one I've been sent by Faber and that is Lullaby. Now they, they marketed this as sort of the new girl on the train and... Um, uh, notes on a scandal they linked it to that so normally and also I, I quite appealed to me that it wasn't that long so this is excuse me hiccup this is um not coming out until january 2018 it's called lullaby um and it is um translated from french it's by leila slimani and it is let's have a look <clears throat> Here we go. It says, is Lullaby the next Gone Girl? So let me read it to you. So, when Miriam, a French Moroccan lawyer, decides to return to work, she and her husband look for the perfect caretaker for their two young children. They never dreamed they would find Louise, a quiet, polite and devoted woman who sings to their children, cleans the family chic apartment in Paris's upscale 10th mm, arrondissement. Hmm. Stays late without complaint and hosts enviable birthday parties. The couple and nanny become more and more dependent on each other. But as jealousy, resentment and suspicions increase, Miriam and Paul's idyllic tableau is shattered. Ooh. So yeah, that sounds thingy. This next book I'm so excited about, I think I'm gonna read it in October. It is Jen Campbell's series of short stories, The Beginning of the World in the Middle of the Night. I love this, this is a proof copy. There was two proof copies available. I'm sure you've seen this all over Booktube. Um, there was the night and the day one, and I got the day one, published by um, Two Roads. I just can't wait to read this. I won't go into detail about it because I'm sure you've you've seen lots and lots of videos about it, but God, I listened to Jen read in her video, which I will link down below, the first bit of the first story, and she is just, she's just such an amazing storyteller. Like, even just, like, just listening to her, I was like, yeah, go on, go on. I wanted to hear more, so I'm so pleased that he's here so that I can continue to read, and um, I'm really going to love this, and I can't wait to get around to it and tell you all how much I adore and love it. Mwah! Uh, the last one I've got here sent from a um, publisher. It's also something I'm very excited about. They sent me with some absolutely enviable, beautiful prints. Um, this is uh, the, oh, the Mermaid and Mrs. Hancock by Imogen Hermes Goa. Now this is a proof copy, and it is absolutely beautiful. Look at that! Look at that there. This is um, Vintage's um, lead debut, coming out in 2018. I've got the press release here. Let's discover together. The press release was massive as well. They're really into it. It's coming out on the 25th of January in hardback. It says here, the voyage is special. It will change everything. London 17... That's the bloody back of the book, Lauren, you fool. The merchant Jonah Hancock learns that his captain has sold Jonah's ship and it's all its goods for what appears to be a mermaid. As gossip spreads through the docks and coffee shops, the parlours and brothels of Georgian London, everyone who's anyone wants to see Jonah's marvel. Suddenly, this very ordinary merchant finds himself catapulted into a glittering world of opulence and wealth beyond... But be beyond his wildest dreams. At a lavish party, he meets Angelica Neal. Elegant, beautiful and charming, she is London's most celebrated courtesan. This journey... Oh, God, I'm, I'm skipping ahead. This chance meeting will steer both of their lives onto a dangerous new course, a journey during which they will learn that priceless things come at a greatest cost. So, yeah, excited about that, too. That sounds very, very exciting. So the last two books are books that were sent to me um, in the Page Habit book. I have a book um, unboxing video from those two boxes. So if you'd like to see those being unboxed and the true joy on my face as I unbox them, go to the link before, before you look at these. Um, the first one is The Rattled Bones by S.M. Parker. Um, I believe that, so this is a sort of spooky tale um, and it's all annotated by the author. That's one of the Page Habits things that they do, which is lovely and exciting. And you get a little letter from the author in the front, which is also very exciting. That's upside down, but that's the letter. Um, I'm told this is a sort of like YA, um, 
like sort of creepy story. Very excited to get into that. Um, and I've also got this, which is such a beautiful cover, The History of Bees by Maya Lund. Um, and this is, let's find out what, oh, things coming out. So this is set in three different time zones, England, 1852, United States, 2007, and China, 2098. Um, and it's about, it looks like here, so it says, on the edge of self-destruction, William is a biologist who has chosen the mundane life of a seed merchant over higher callings of science and discovery. Yearning for the attention and approval of his eldest son, he sets out to build a new type of beehive, one that will give him both him and his descendants honor and fame. And then it goes on more, more bee-related related stuff. And again, a letter here, and it is annotated throughout by the author, which is so exciting. And then within those, I also got these two little short stories. So one of them is The Husband Stitch by Carmen uh, Maria Mercado. And this one is The Bridge by Sachi Green. Um, so yeah, within them, you get two little short stories, which is amazing. So those are the books that I've received recently. What books have you been buying recently? What books have you read any of these? How do people enjoy Sarah Waters? Which one should I go to next? And yeah, I think that's it. So. Thanks so much for watching. I'm off to the uh, zoo today for um, uh, afternoon tea with my uh, friends. It's what I got them for their birthdays. Um, yeah, if you get a few moments, please do fill in that um, Google uh, form down below. I'd really appreciate it. And I will see you all again on Wednesday for another victory video.